Frequent viewers of the channel know that I like somewhat strangely defined functions. So I've got a whole playlist on the floor function, for instance. Another function that I like quite a bit is the sum of digits function that takes in a natural number and outputs the sum of its digits. And so this problem has something to do with that function. So it's from a 2008 mathematical Olympiad from Kazakhstan, and it has the following name. I think that this is Zontikov, but I'm not really sure. Okay, so let's look at the careful statement of this problem. So for natural numbers n, we'll define this sum of digits function to be the function s. And so it takes in a number, and like I said, it spits out the sum of the digits. And our goal is to find all solutions to the following cubic equation. So we have n is equal to 2 times s of n cubed plus 8. Okay, so let's maybe get into the solution. We'll use two main ideas here. One will be that n and s of n are congruent mod 9. We won't use that until kind of the end or one of the later stages of this problem. And another thing that we'll do is use kind of a typical way of estimating the, the maximum size of s of n to like pare down our problem to some reasonable finite set. Okay, so let's start by supposing that n has k total digits. And so this is a classic thing to do with the, these sum of digits type problems is to, you know, give a name to the number of digits from n. So let's notice that if n has k digits, it's between 10 to the k minus 1, which has k minus 1 digits. And it's between 10 to the k minus 1, which is the smallest number with k digits. And the largest it can be is 1 less than 10 to the k. And so the largest number with k digits is just a string of k nines. Notice this is the smallest number with k plus 1 digits. Okay, but the largest value of s of n from values of n within this range is pretty easily seen to be the last number, which contains all nines. So this tells us s of n will be less than or equal to 9 plus a bunch of nines. But how many nines do we have there? Well, we have exactly k nines. That would be like if n had k digits that were all 9, but that's obviously equal to 9 times k. That's in fact like the definition of multiplication. But now we can use this inequality right here, the fact that 10 to the k minus 1 is less than or equal to n, and then this inequality right here with maybe those two parts to get an inequality built out of looking for solutions to our goal equation. So let's see what we have. So if this equation is satisfied, then we see that 10 to the k minus 1 must be less than or equal to 2 times 9 times k cubed plus 8. But now we can multiply this out and 2 times 9k cubed is something like 1,458. So this is equal to 1,458 times k cubed plus 8. But let's notice we've got an exponential object smaller than a polynomial object. We have this 10 to the k minus 1 is less than or equal to this 1458 k cubed plus 8. But it's well known that in the long run, exponential type things grow much faster than polynomial type things. In other words, we know that 10 to the k minus 1 should be bigger than 1458 k cubed plus 8 for k, and I'll just put here large enough. And what I mean by that is k after a certain number. And that number doesn't have to be that big because exponential things grow much, much faster than polynomial type things. Okay, so that motivates us to consider the following function. And that function will be the difference of the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And we want to determine when that, pos when that function is positive. So I'll set f of x 
equal to 10 to the x minus 1 minus 1458 x cubed minus 8. So something like that. And like I just said, we want to show that f of x is bigger than 0 for x bigger than or equal to, I'll just put x naught, where x naught is some sort of small-ish number. Okay, so I guess maybe the first thing to do is just to play around with some small numbers in here to find out if we get a positive or a negative value for x. So let's look first at f evaluated at 6. So notice that gives us 10 to the 6 minus 1, which is 100,000, and then minus 1458 times 6 cubed, and then minus minus 8. Great. And now here's where we go for some estimation because we don't really want to calculate that. So we can change this equality to an inequality. So this will be less than, we can replace this 6 cubed with 10 squared. And that's because 6 cubed is most definitely bigger than 10 squared, which is 100. And then furthermore, we can replace this 1458 with 1000. Again, because 1000 is most definitely less than 1458. So we've changed all of these numbers right here in a direction so that we create something larger than our thing. So our thing is smaller. But let's notice that doing that calculation gives us the number negative 8. So the takeaway here is that f evaluated at 6 is less than 0. Okay, so let's put a box around that. So what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that it most definitely is possible for n to have 6 digits because this equality right here, inequality right here, is satisfied if n has six digits. And then we won't check this, but it's also satisfied for five digits, four digits, three digits, two digits, and one digit. We just really want to find out when it is not satisfied. So let's look at f evaluated at seven. Maybe we'll get the f evaluated at seven is positive. So again, I'll do like an inequality here. So this is bigger than, now we have 1 million because it's 10 to the 6, 10 to the 7 minus 1, I should say. And then here we'll subtract 2,000. Since we're going for an inequality, we want to subtract something larger now times, so we would plug in 7 into this x cubed, so we would have 7 cubed. 7 cubed is 343, so we can replace that with something larger. We'll replace it with 400, and then we'll subtract 8. Okay, so we have something like that. But now it's easy to check that if you do that simplification, you get something which is bigger than zero. So in the end, we have f evaluated at seven is bigger than zero. So let's put a box around that. That means it's impossible for n to have seven digits. And now what we'd really like to show is that f is positive for all values of x larger than seven. And we can do that, and I'll do that with a derivative, although I'm sure you could do that some other way. So let's start by looking at f prime evaluated at 7. So let's notice that that will be equal to the natural log of 10 times 10 to the 7, which is a million, or 10 to the 6, I should say, which is a million again. So that's because that's the derivative of 10 to the x minus 1. You have to pick up a natural log of 10. Okay, and then we'll have minus 3 times this times x squared. So that's going to give us 4, 3, 7, 4 x squared. Or maybe I should say times 7 squared, like that. So now we'd like to also introduce an inequality here to make sure that this is positive easily. So let's notice the natural log of 10 is larger than the natural log of 9, because 10 is bigger than 9. 
Furthermore, nine is three squared and three squared is bigger than e squared. e is like 2.718. That means natural log of 10 is larger than the natural log of e squared, but the natural log of e squared is two. So I can take that natural log of 10 off and put a two there if I put my inequality. Now I'd like to change these numbers to make the inequality go in the correct direction. So what I'll do is I'll replace 4,374 with 5,000. So we exchange it with a larger number because we're subtracting. So here we'll do that with 5,000. And we'll replace 7 squared with 50 because that's larger than 49. But now if you do that calculation right there, you'll see that you get something that is positive. So in the end, we see that f prime of 7 is bigger than 0. So that means f is increasing at 7. That doesn't tell us that it's not decreasing somewhere after 7, but it does tell us that it's increasing at 7. Okay, so now furthermore, you can also check the following three things, that f double prime of seven is bigger than zero, f triple prime of seven is bigger than zero, and finally, f quadruple prime evaluated at seven at x, I should say, is bigger than zero for all x. Why did we go to the fourth derivative? So we went for the, to the fourth derivative because that leaves us with just an exponential function. The fourth derivative of this is an exponential function. Exponential functions are always positive. Okay, so that means the fourth derivative is always positive. So that means the third derivative is always increasing. So it's positive at seven. That means it's positive everywhere after seven. But that means that this thing is increasing, but it's positive at 7. That means it's positive everywhere after 7. And then that just continues to loop us back up. So the second derivative always being positive means the first derivative is always positive, meaning this function is always positive for f bigger than 7. Okay, but we wanted this function to be negative. That would give us our possible solutions. That means our only possible solutions occur when we have six or less digits. Okay, so let's take that bit of information and finish this one off. So we just finished showing that n has one, two, three, four, five, or six digits. So what does that tell us about the size of s of n? So the largest value of s of n will occur when it has six digits that are all nines, but that means that s of n would be equal to 54. So we have s of n is less than or equal to 54. Okay, so now let's take our goal equation over here. So I'll transpose it up here. We have n equals 2 times s of n cubed plus 8. And let's reduce this thing mod 9. So let's see, let's write that here. That's reduction modulo nine. And we're gonna use the following fact that the sum of the digits of a number is congruent to the original number mod nine. So that's a pretty classic result from number theory. I have a whole course on number theory if you wanna check that out. So reducing mod nine means we can replace S of N with just N and that gives us N is congruent to two N cubed plus eight modulo nine. But the great thing about working mod nine is that you only have to check a finite number of values. You only have to check zero through eight. So for instance, it's pretty clear that zero is not a solution because we would have zero is congruent to eight one is a solution because one is congruent to 10. And in fact, nothing else is a solution. And so you can do that just by making a chart. If you wanted to, you could make a chart of n and then two n cubed plus eight. And then just remember that you're working mod nine. So you have zero, one, two, three, dot, dot, dot. So like I said, plugging in zero to this, you get eight. You want these two to match, so they don't. Plugging one into this, you get 10, reducing mod nine, you get one, so those match, that's good. Plugging two into this, you get, what is that gonna be, 16 plus eight. 
but 16 plus 8 is 24, and 24 is the same thing as 6 mod 9, so notice that 2 is not congruent to 6 mod 9, and then you can keep going. So 3 cubed is 27, but 27 is 0 mod 9 plus 8 is 8, but notice 3 is not congruent to 8, and so on and so forth. So like I said, this is the only solution we get. We have n is congruent to 1 modulo 9. But then n and s of n are congruent mod 9. That tells us that s of n is also congruent to 1 mod 9. So let's see what we've got here. We have s of n is congruent to 1 mod 9 and s of n is less than or equal to 54. But now we can just very easily list all of the numbers that are 1 mod 9 between 1 and 54. So let's do that. So that tells us that s of n comes from the following set. So 1, 10, the next one would be 19, the next one would be 37, the next thing would be 46. Notice the next thing that's 1 mod 9 would be 54 plus 1, which is 55, but that's larger than 54, so we're not good to go there. And now we just check each of these values of s of n to get something for n. So let's do these one at a time. So let's see, what happens if s of n equals 1? So that tells us that n equals 2 times 1 cubed plus 8. That's equal to 10. But then we need to recheck that everything works out. Is the sum of the digits of 10 equal to 1? Yes. That means we have a solution. So let's put n equals 10 over here, and we'll put a nice box around that to say that, yes, we have a solution. And now let's go to the next case. So what happens if s of n equals 10? So that means n equals 2 times 10 cubed plus 8 but that's gonna be 2008. So that's kind of cute because it's the year of the exam. And then we need to check that the sum of the digits of 2008 is 10 and it is. So that gives us another solution. So n is 2008. So we'll put a nice box around that as well. Then maybe I'll skip 19. So I'll leave 19 as a homework exercise. Let's put maybe check marks over 1 and 10, and now we'll check 37. So let's do that. So if s of n is equal to 37, that tells us that n is equal to 2 times 37 cubed plus 8. But now you can do the calculation on that, and you get 101,314. Check it out. If you do the sum of the digits of this again, so let's say we're doing that here, applying this s function, what do we get? We get 1 plus 0 plus 1, so that's 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 4 is 9, plus 1 is 10, so you get 10. So the sum of the digits of 10, but 10 is clearly not equal to 37, so that means that 37 does not give you a solution. And then just maybe to finish it all off, I'll leave you guys to check 46 for homework. So maybe post in the comments if 19 is a solution and if 46 is a solution. And I guess I should say those aren't the solutions. Those are the values of the sum of the digits. What solutions, if we have solutions, go along with those values of S of N? And that's a good place to stop. Thank you.